Hi there and welcome to the fourth row in the Get Fit by Rowing series. Now today's row is going to be a zone three to four heart rate row. So that means it's run about seven to eight out of ten from an effort point of view. What we're going to do is we're going to do four minute intervals six times with 90 seconds rest in between and that intensity is going to be up there. Now from a pace point of view what this means is that whatever you were rowing your zone two stuff at you're probably going to be rowing this about 10 seconds faster. What that is going going to do is for the first couple of intervals you're going to feel the intensity is up but your heart rate isn't going to kind of spike that much okay you might get up to kind of 75 to 80 percent but then as we get through this row that's when you're going to get to kind of 80 to 85 percent of maximum heart rate okay so remember it's up to you how you want to do this if you want to do heart rate training if you want to do 2k based training then it's around about 2k plus 12 you're aiming for and like I say effort point of view is 7 to 8 out of 10 I'm trying to give you everything to do here but basically the rule here is that you're going to be going harder than you were on the zone two low intensity stuff but not as hard as you were on the max intensity okay so that's really all you have to think about i'm going to be doing today's row at around about 24 strokes a minute so by all means follow me for stroke rate and just try and keep that intensity up but before we get started we have to do a four minute warm-up now you have to set up your machine first on a concept two that means going to your drag factor and setting it to where you want it to be if you don't know where you want it to be set it between like four and five all right because too low isn't the issue too high is an issue on a water rower unless you're going to suddenly just pour more water into it you've kind of got it set i have my tank set up to 17 in case you care and if you're on a non uh, concept or water rower and you've just got the just adjustment resistance thing adjustment uh, then just put it so you get a nice feel from the stroke but it's not too heavy all right uh, i have my iphone in the monitor cradle right in front of me at eye height so i don't have to look up or down and then finally i've got my foot stretcher set so that i can get into a comfortable position with my uh, shins oh God, oh, <laughs> get my shins vertical comfortably is what i'm trying to say um because if you're too high, it can be a little bit restrictive to get there. Too low, it can be a bit too easy and you can go scooting straight past. Oh, I feel like it was a bit of a long intro today. We had quite a lot to cover. So, four minute warm up. I just want you to think about enough of a push as though you were standing up to start for the first minute of this, okay? Get your body moving and used to the fact you're going to be rowing today. So, here we go. In three, two, one, let's begin. So, really nice and gentle. I've had a bit of a. Um, odd day where I've just been sitting in the, what do you call it, the bleachers, the stands of a swimming um, pool watching my daughter doing a swimming gala. So <laughs> my back today is exceptionally sore. So I'm kind of hoping that today's row is going to help open up my lower back a little bit. So this is why I'm not overdoing it pace wise. I'm down at around about 2k plus 25 right now for the first minute just to get my body moving, to get it used to pushing with the legs and that pivot forwards and backwards over my hips. So you tilt forwards into the front and then lay back at the back of the stroke. And you're really only going between one o'clock at the front to 11 o'clock at the back. And now we're a minute in. If you want to just increase that push, from your legs so you come into the front push a little bit harder but keep that forwards tilt keep the arms straight you should find you're going a little bit faster and the intensity has gone up a bit and because the stroke rate for me anyway is down at 20 strokes a minute right now i'd say this was about six out of ten effort so for the main session today I'm still going to be going a lot faster than this. But this is useful to get warmed up, ready for the main session. Okay, three more strokes. And we'll put one foot on the ground if you wish to do single drills. So here we go. So take one foot out, put it on the ground, continue rowing. I've still not quite found a comfortable way to do this. That doesn't work. The double rail water rower doesn't make this particularly easy. I think if I put that foot forwards, it's a bit more comfortable. So the point is, you're meant to be able to open up your back a lot easier with one leg in. And that's not happening. <laughs> right, swap feet. Oh, my water bottle's in the way now. Oh. Yeah, so just by coming into the front, 
with just one leg in because you don't have two strapped in it's easier to get the flexibility to be able to lean into that one o'clock tilt with your shins in that vertical position and don't worry your pace will have dropped right down by doing this okay both legs both feet back in the straps legs straight roll with your back and arms so tilt forwards and then you pick up the initial tension of your flywheel or water wheel whatever you've got by swinging your back and then you pull in your arms so swing pull and then push your arms and then swing forwards again over your hips okay one more here let's roll into the front with a force tilt straight arms and just push out from the front don't worry about pushing too far or powerfully your point the point here is just to get that feeling of connection at the front with the straight arms and the forwards tilt so just push and it's almost like the moment you get that connection that little push of the legs you can stop again because it's just about that timing and holding your, your arms nice and straight there we go that's our four minute warm-up done now you don't have to stop warming up just because i have if you want to pause the video or keep on warming up while i talk and explain one more time what it is we're doing today then by all means do but make sure and have a quick drink all right <laughs> okay so yeah keep moving up and down the rail do what you wish and i'm about to explain one more time what it is we're doing today Okay then, so what we're doing today is six four minute intervals with 90 seconds rest in between. And the intensity is gonna be that zone three to four, which is 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate. So that means run about seven to eight out of 10 from an effort point of view. And from a 2K pace point of view, run about 2K plus 12 at 24 strokes a minute. Okay, so familiar row if you've done enough of my workouts, but the difference here is that if you're doing heart rate based training then if you start to see your heart rate get above that 85% then you need to back off and if you're on like interval three and you haven't even reached 70% of max yet then you're not going fast enough <laughs> okay it's kind of down to that so um that's really what we're gonna do so it's four minutes then 90 seconds rest six times I mean that's hence why six times four minutes don't know why I repeated that there but there we go so get yourself strapped in make sure that you're ready to go have a little wiggle of your backside like I say we're going to do four minutes I'm going to quickly flip smart row on to heart rate based uh there we go yeah cool all right are we ready to go for this then yeah good here we go then in three two one go so like I say I'm aiming for 24 strokes per minute which usefully is one stroke every two and a half seconds I do like stroke rates where I can just look at the counter and count down so 20 strokes a minute 12 or sorry 24 30 well 12 would work as well but that's a bit slow <laughs> Uh, so when you start doing 22s and things 26, 28 and you have to be a bit more careful about your timing and looking at the stroke rate now don't worry it will take a while for your heart rate to drift up to the right zone for you so you certainly should get there by the end of this interval but don't worry if you're kind of only just reaching it and we're already a minute and a half into this interval so I'm bang on pace rowing at 152 per 500 meters which is what I'll aim for for the majority of this session unless I suddenly see my heart rate spike 
I wouldn't be surprised if it did. I was not feeling particularly powerful today after spending the whole day just sitting on a hard concrete bench. Okay, so we're coming up to the three minute point. And I'd kind of hope that you are in that zone three to four by now. A minute left. And then 90 seconds rest. And those 90 seconds of rest are really there to help you keep your heart rate under control. Because if you were to row for 24 minutes at this pace, it would get too close to zone five. Okay, closing in on the end of this first interval. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. So, yeah, I was up 140 beats per minute by the end there, which puts me firmly where I want to be as being my max heart rate is 174. And then hopefully I'll see it drop down, recover quite well over the course of the next 90 seconds. Make sure to stay hydrated though. Have a drink because dehydration is a huge enemy when it comes to how quickly you fatigue and how quickly your heart rate will start to spike on you. Even if you're not putting in the effort, just dehydration, your body will be like, ah, and your heart rate will go up. Oh, there's a good opening interval. Right, so the next one, now that we're hopefully properly warmed up, I wanna talk a little bit about technique. So I haven't really spoken about technique for this entire series, so it's about time I did. Oh, and it'll help me, to be honest. Okay, so there's 10 seconds to go. Make sure you're back on the machine. Have a wiggle of your backside, make sure you're comfortable. Four, three, two, one, go. And we're off again. So I recovered all the way down to 47 heart rate just then. And as being my resting heart rate is 40, I'm quite pleased about that. the sign of a, well, I hope, fit heart, the fact it can recover so quickly. And it's one of the reasons heart rate based training can be effective, is that you can see literally on screen what's going on with your heart rate, you can see the effort side than how well you recover and remember like I said in the third workout effort isn't just about moving backwards and forwards on the machine you want to be putting in optimal force by rowing with a okay technique. I mean, I'm not expecting you to be Henley quality <laughs> rower or head of the Charles or the Oxford boat race. 
all I'm really expecting from anyone is that you are putting effort into your stroke two minutes gone and that effort starts with the legs okay so rowing isn't actually about pulling the handle although the handle is what transfers to your flywheel or water wheel or whatever you use you're not actually pulling until the back of the stroke so at the front you want arms straight and a forwards tilt into the front of the machine and then you hold those straight arms and tilt as you push the machine away with your feet and what that does is it sends the power from your legs through your body into your arms and into the handle like a conduit because you're not pulling hang on two more one more stroke Whew. so by having that forward tilt and arm straight and pushing what happens is the force from your legs and your feet travels up through your body through your straight arms and then if you are hooked with your fingers over the handle and straight that power basically you're just bracing against the handle and because you're bracing and pushing with your feet and because your seat's on rolls you are able to fight the resistance or weight of the flywheel or water wheel have a drink and make it move and so there therefore the more you push with your feet the faster or the more of a strain against the weight of the flywheel and therefore the faster it's going to move and this is all without thinking about pulling this is just straight arms and pushing with your feet that it comes up through your body so we'll continue this thought as we get into the next interval in 10 seconds uh, five four three two one go uh, oh that's a bit of a jerky finish there for my pretty lower back i am enjoying this water rower but the one thing that keeps on just throwing me is that very first stroke when the water and the paddle if you want to call it the blades inside it aren't moving it's almost like it does a wheel spin as it accelerates the water and there's like a, a bump in the water I noticed this in session two or row two when doing the sprints so that first stroke is a little weird so yeah forward tilt arms straight and push with the legs and the way people usually describe it is that your arms and body 
are hanging off the handle. Much the same way as if you were, you kind of lifted yourself off the ground with a pull up bar and then just suspended yourself, just holding the bar and hanging. You don't bend your arms to take your weight when you're hanging off a pull-up bar. You keep your arms straight and let the mass of your body be supported by like the tendons and ligaments in your back, shoulders and arms rather than muscular force. All right, all right. So I'm at 151 heart rate. I'm getting up there from a heart rate percentage. So I'm obviously putting in the effort to get heart rate up, but I just have to be careful not to overdo it and spike to zone five. Takes a lot of concentration, certainly a lot more concentration to keep heart rate in check than rowing at a specific pace. Last one. Uh, yeah, if you can just dial in to say 152 pace, whatever yours is, then that's all you have to do is no matter how tough it feels, you just continue pushing away, pushing away at 152 pace. But for this, for the heart rate stuff, you do need to keep a BDI on your graph or the numbers in front of you. And if it starts to climb too much, like I was definitely nudging the top end of zone four just then, then you have to back off a couple of seconds pace to reduce the intensity a little bit because you don't want to break into zone five and go anaerobic because that's not quite, I mean, it's not the end of the world on this one. You, don't, you certainly don't want to break the zone two into three, but zone three and four into five, if it's only for a few seconds, you're fine. I know that's slightly going back on what I'm trying to say, but what I'm trying to say is that for these four minute intervals, you want to do everything you can to stay within zone three and four. But if like you've got 10 seconds in zone five, don't worry about it. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, I took that opening stroke a little easier that time. And actually, I know I said I was gonna talk technique, but just because I brought it up, it's worthwhile just saying that these zones, if you're doing heart rate based training, do try and keep to the zone, okay? Because like in most of my workouts up until this series, I've tended to give pace guides. So today would be a 2K plus 12, regardless of what your heart rate was doing. 
So even if you ended up in zone five, well, we weren't training based on heart rate, so that wasn't the problem. But when you are doing heart rate training, it kind of, there's a divergence between it and pace-based training. Like if you look at 2K plus 20 as a low intensity row, eventually, after about 25 minutes, your heart rate is likely to drift higher than 70% of max. Which is okay if you're doing 2K based training, but not okay for heart rate. So if that happens to you, back off the pace. Especially if, say you're aiming for 60 minutes at zone two. If you blow your heart rate after 25 minutes, you're still getting benefits from the row, but not for the protocol you're training at. So you kind of need to leave your ego in check if you're doing heart rate based training and commit to it. You can't really dip in and out based on what you fancy <laughs> that day. Okay, well, we've got a minute left. It's all right, lost count. So hopefully while I was talking about that stuff, you've been concentrating on pushing with the feet with straight arms. So I tend to do this. I'll give you a higher level technique tip and then talk about something else for a while to give you a chance to practice it. There's no point me telling you everything and then you being a bit overwhelmed by all the technique cues I'm giving you. Two more, one more. Oh. 151, so right in the right place. So hopefully you've got a feel for the intensity by now. Have a drink. Oh. And it's down to what you are enjoying, whether you go for firmly zone three or top end zone four, it's up to you. I'm definitely top end zone four for most of this. And then, yeah, it takes, I don't know, about 30 seconds for me to get build straight back up. In fact, I'll try and I'll give you an indication. If I finish just then, let's well, say 155. So I'll let you know how long it takes for me to get back up. If I can try and concentrate, I'll tell you what I recover to now that we're... How many have we done? Is that four that we've done? Oh, I should pay more attention. <laughs> oh, right. Ten seconds to go until the next one. My heart rate is at 75. Okay, three, two, one, go. So basically I've got to double my heart rate in order to get back to zone four. But because I'm activated already from the previous intervals, 
It shouldn't take that long to get there. So closing in on 30 seconds gone, and I'm already 120. So that's 45 of an increase so far. Because you will get cardiac drift through your workout, even though we've got these 90 second rests. Your body does fatigue. Okay, a minute gone, 140. So I figure by the time this 30 seconds runs out, I'll be up at 150. I see. 148. 150. So it's a minute and a half, and I'm at 152. And that's what I want. It shows continued fitness that it took a minute and a half to get up to zone four again. And so now I just need to pay attention, make sure not to overdo it. I mean, the last interval, what I suggest is put in your intensity and then keep it up there. Don't ease off. Let that last interval be a fast last. So, back to technique. The feet need to push into the machine. At the same time, you feel the handle connect or bite, whatever you want to say, to the flywheel or water wheel. So you push. You really want to concentrate on pushing as you connect. And that way you get the full available length and power going into your machine. And that's why you don't go past uh, shins vertical as you slide forwards. Okay, almost there. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Right at the top of four, zone four. Which is good. It means I've gauged this properly. And I kind of worked my way up from three to four. So yeah, so if you go way past shins vertical, what happens is your backside escapes out from underneath you before you're able to push your feet into the machine. And that loses you potential stroke length and power you miss that connection. And what you want to do is make sure, because 60% of the power comes from that leg push at the front. So you want to make sure you get all of that available 60% into the machine. And then add in your backswing and the finish with your arms to, well, yeah, just top up the power. But you really want to think about a powerful push and connect. Feel those heels plant down into the 
foot plate as you feel your hands connect, okay? All right, here we go for our last interval in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Oh. So I'm gonna just get my pace right up there, 150 for the first strokes. Because I want to try and get my heart rate back up so it's in that top end of zone four for the majority of this interval. And so in order to add in pace, I'm thinking about pushing harder with the legs. I'm not thinking about pulling any harder. And I'm also keeping to 24 strokes per minute. So there has to be power that I'm putting in here. Working harder to get heart rate firmly in zone four for the last just over two and a half minutes of today's workout. And I'm really hoping that you've recognized the effort sensation involved in today's row that it is noticeably harder than row one and three, the low intensity rows we've done so far, but it's nowhere near or most of it up until maybe the last 30 seconds of my effort anyway be nowhere near as tough as the zone 5 max intensity row that we did in zone in row 2 okay one minute 24 strokes keep your technique powerful keep your effort strong good posture at both ends of the stroke hinge forwards backwards and push with the legs here we go four three two one oh. so 162 I think so probably nudging into zone 5 towards the end for me but like I said that was okay for the closing stages of that interval let me just quit oh, and then my workouts oh, uh, start start right have a quick drink so I was just 
building up a two-minute cooldown. Ah, oh. you know, as much as I talk posture a lot, I do think that there is something about the seat on this water rower that does promote a very rounded posture in the lower back. I'm like this. I was looking at the video of uh, row two and I could see that everything was kind of sat down and rounded. So I need to work out what to do with this. But for the time being, let's get into our two minute cooldown. Hopefully you're, you're just, the edge has been knocked off in the recovery time. So you should be okay to go. Do this around about the warm up pace in three, two, one. Let's go. It's the same stroke rate. Around about 20 strokes a minute. And it's really just, you're thinking about, say you were standing up, but you had shopping bags in your hands or something. So you need a little bit more of a push just to put some sense of effort into your machine. And then over the course of these two minutes, you can back off the intensity. I'll quickly check what... So my Apple Watch says that in today's row, I burnt 380 calories. That includes 80 calories just being alive. So active calories was 300, which isn't bad, but if you look at the amount of effort that we've just put into the row and you only get 300 calories for it. So it just shows what I always say about how you can't out train your fork. After all, 300 calories is just a little bit more than a pint of beer or like a slice of pizza. So you really do need to think about if weight loss is part of your goal here as well as general fitness, you do have to think about what's going into your mouth. I'm hoping to do a little blog about this, like a YouTube shorts blog about this as I go through the same thing. Last stroke here. So I'm hoping my injuries are cleared up now and I can get back into proper training again. And then I can, that'll then give me a reason to follow proper nutrition as well. So I'm gonna try and do on YouTube shorts, just a series again. I've done it before, but just do a series again, showing what I'm eating and all that stuff. If nothing else, then to keep me accountable. And uh, what's it Paul Taylor said to be genuine? Is that the word you said, genuine? I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, so that's the thing, is I just want to make sure, authentic, that what I'm saying, I'm actually doing so. Right, uh, time for stretching. If you don't have time uh, to stretch, then uh, please at least take a moment to stretch your quads and your hamstrings, possibly your glutes as well. Don't do it in the shower, because I don't want it to fall over, but just try and find a moment to do it. Or, Stretchy John has just appeared. He will take you through a whole bunch of stretches which you can follow him on, and um, yeah, if you get air, uh, <laughs> space for a mat somewhere to do it. Or I'm going to stretch on the machine so you can follow me do similar. So put your feet back in the straps, okay? A little loose so you can um, flex your feet back against them slightly. Legs nice and straight, put your hands in the air and fold forwards. Now, hang on, I've got to sit further back in the water row seat, haven't I? Yeah, that's better. And then fold forwards. And as you fold forwards, the key there is fold, not bend, okay? You should feel that everything underneath your hamstrings and everything, all just gets that little bit, um, well, stretchy, really, is the right phrase for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's been an odd, I've had an odd, my brain hasn't quite worked today in our chat. And this is why I've been very functional about uh, what I've been talking about and a little bit, I think somebody once described my, my rose as a little bit dry, um, which I, I kind of disagreed with. Right, that's the hamstrings done. Let's do, let's move on to glutes. So put one leg up on, the rail, or either on concept two on the water roar, bring one foot over it so your heel is on the crook of your knee, bring your knee over your body, I'm gonna turn away from you here, hold it in place and then rotate round and down towards your, in my case, it's the left glute because I've got my right leg straight. 
and just rotate round and you should feel you get a nice stretch into your glute. Um, what's it talking about? Yeah, yeah, someone said I was, I can be a bit dry. Because sometimes I do just talk technique and whatever. Um, and I think because today I was talking about heart rates and technique and whatever, you'll probably put it under there. There's no real entertaining dead mouse Van Halen dinner chat today, I'm afraid, sorry. I really should up my game. But again, we're still in week, or the first four sessions of this first week, so there's loads of stuff I have to talk to you about to, to kind of trickle this information towards you. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so change legs, it's the same thing again. Foot comes over, bring your knee across, and then rotate round, and you get a stretch right into your glute. Because um, after all, there's no point just giving you all of the information. Uh, I mean, yes, there's a, there's a safety side to making sure that you're rowing with a good technique, but I've given you the headline things, which is basically just that forwards tilt uh, with arms straight, push with your legs, then into a back tilt. And then as we go through the, 20, the 24 sessions, I'll give you more and more in little tips about technique to help you improve your technique. But really, as long as you're thinking about pushing with your legs and that hip pivot backwards and forwards over your back, that's what matters. So that gets so that got out in the, the warm up, I think, of session one. Uh, what we'll do next, quads? Um, so I'm gonna stand up next to my machine. Uh, and now I can talk about stuff. Because listen, there's a, not that I'm saying I get it right, but, oh, hang on. So stand on one leg, flick your other leg up behind you so that the heel touches your uh, glute. Yeah, my back's ruined after sitting down today. I can feel it twinging away. Um, yeah, there is this like a, oh, I'm not gonna say tricks. It makes it sound like I, I know that I, I'm good at it, but the, talking for an entire workout, think, having things to say, is kind of tough, <laughs> to be honest, which is probably why I do tend to default to technique quite a lot of the time. Because it's you can cover a lot of ground, a lot of time just by talking about technique. Um, but also just, uh, knowing, change legs, knowing when you've taken it too far, which I, again, I'm not saying that I've managed that because um, I think sometimes I do talk too much technique, but there just is, there's a little nuance to be able to talk the whole way through and not just repeat. I think that's the thing is that I'm hoping if nothing else, although I will repeat from session to session, um, hopefully I don't kind of just say the same things over and over again as the, within a row. And plus there's just no point Talk with platitudes, there's no point in me saying, come on, you've got this, you're great, you're amazing, you're fit. I've just changed, the, for the podcast people, I've just changed the other glute. Get my light cable out of the way. Now we're going to move on to hip flexors here. So uh, put one foot in front of you with a 90 degree angle to your knee. Your other foot is behind you in, well, it was a 90 degree angle to your knee, but your knee is now on the ground. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Apologies if you can see debris of like cables next to me. Hopefully I'll crop all this out. Anyway, uh, and then just send your body forwards, okay? And what that does is you should then open up that back leg and it'll put a nice stretch into your hip flexor. As long as you just send your body forward, you're not rounding your upper lower back when you do this. Uh, um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, uh, the platitudes thing. There's no point in me sitting here going, you're doing amazing, you're, you're, you're fantastic, you're great, whatever. Because I don't know what you're doing. I'm rowing my own session. So when I say, oh, you might be starting to get fatigued here, it's because I'm starting to get fatigued. So I kind of think, well, maybe it's going to be happening for you. But there's absolutely no point in me saying, hey, you've got this. Hey, come on, yay, woohoo, why? And yeah, and being a gym instructor type because I have absolutely no idea what's happening with you. So that's why I kind of just tend to talk about the stuff that I talk about. Let's change legs, do exactly the same thing. And sometimes, uh, if you've seen enough of my historic views, uh, um, videos, see, I just can't talk. Historic videos, you know that sometimes I'll just go, usually on Fridays I tend to go a little bit crazy. <laughs> usually because it's with the promise of uh, spaghetti bolognese later that evening. Um, I tend to go a little bit mad, but it's a Saturday today, so. Uh, but it is, it's what we're going, it's uh, burgers, nice chili burgers tonight. Um, Saturday's always like a nice wee cheat meal. So tonight is uh, chili burgers with um, salad, past, um, a little, Pesto, pasta, and some coleslaw. There you go, in case you cared about my dinner plans. Oh, right, get back up onto the seat. Oh, this is also quite an uncomfortable one to sit sideways on. I do, I, I've complained a couple of times about the water roar, and I don't mean to, because it is, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's different in concept too, but it's lovely to row in. Let's do forearms, so put your hands in front of your face. Try and level your shoulders off, John, and then push those hands together and then bring them down in front of your body. Okay, so you're pushing your hands together uh, and you've got a 90 degree angle between your fingers and your forearms. And this should 
if you get it right, you should get a nice stretch on the underside of your forearms. And this is where you tend to get more strain, force, sensation, whatever you want to call it, uh, when rowing is uh, in the underside of your forearms. Um, if you get it on the top side of your forearms, chances are you're rowing with your thumbs on top of the handle, which, you know what? Everyone rows how they want to row. I'm not going to change how you do it. But by having your thumbs on top, you... That, remember I was talking about how you get the conduit of power from your feet up through your arms into the handle? If you have your thumbs on top, it kind of changes how that power... Thumbs underneath, it's a straight line right through your hand. Put your thumbs up on top, and it suddenly has to squiggle. Um, hang on, sorry, my watch is saying. Have you stopped rowing? Yes, I have stopped rowing, thank you. <sighs> Dear me, tech. Shoulders next, so hand out straight out in front of you. Bring it across your body, and then naturally that's where I go to, but that's not giving me a stretch. So I use my other arm to just ease it across my body, and now I've suddenly got a stretch through my shoulders, so my delts are now getting a nice little stretch. And again, like I say, you hang off your shoulders, you hang off your arms, and it's that conduit of power into the machine. So your shoulders, although you're not tensing and pulling with them, it's not like you're doing a shoulder press, or, or even like you're doing like a seated row or whatever, it shouldn't really feel... Apparently it's time for me to drink water. Um, it shouldn't really feel like you're doing one of them because you're just finishing the back of the stroke. But your shoulders are still going to get some use, so it's worth stretching them. Especially if you have really bad shoulders like I do. After years of playing squash, my left shoulder is just ruined. Um, if you've seen the, um, some of the stretching videos, I showed you just how inflexible my left shoulder is. Um, and that's just because of standing on court, hitting volley figure of eights over and over again, and I just ruined my shoulder. Um, in fact, my... I may, the next, because the next one's a low intensity. And so although I've done, I've done a, the story of me before, um, if I, I don't know what, I'm actually, the, the next one, the next low intensity row, so that's me just done both shoulders. So I didn't, for podcast people, I didn't tell you that it stopped. Right, we'll do uh, biceps next. So put your hands behind you so you're a ski jumper. Wee, but rotate your thumbs outwards. Um, there you go. Ta-da. And that should stretch the long head of your bicep. Uh, yeah, I think what I'll, I'll backtrack. I think what I'll do for the next low intensity row, like I said, is assuming when I go and see um, Alan the physio tomorrow morning um, about my hip issue and possibly the back issue after sitting at the swimming pool all day, if he gives me the go ahead to be able to train properly again and to get back into running and cycling as well as rowing, uh, and I get and I'm back on the the training train, then. Uh, row one of week two or row five, however one way you want to look at it, um, is going to be a low intensity workout. So I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit about um, my take, how I deal with nutrition and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not saying it's something to follow because usually when someone talks about the stuff, they're then about to sell you a diet plan. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, just for informational points, you can go, oh, right, that's interesting. That's interesting stuff that he says. It gives me something to talk about. Triceps next, hand up in the air, put down your back. So your elbow's not pointing up in the air, but it's not quite all the way where you want it. So use your hand to just push it a little bit to get it straight up to the, into the air. Now my triceps are exceptionally, and what I find is I'm just, I'm really tight and I don't know what, where this has come from. And I'm sure this is where my hip flexor issues come from. So I may, as part of all of my kind of this round of training, um, I might start actually just throwing in half an hour's worth of yoga again just to try and see if, uh, that was yoga, not yogurt. <laughs> um, just, to, just to see if that helps, because I just don't know why I've, everything's tightened up. <sighs> Nothing's particularly changed, apart from the fact I've not been training as much. You never know, maybe the cycling and, um, cycling and running was actually keeping me loose. And so now that I'm back to just rowing, everything's a little bit tight. Swap arms and triceps. I don't know, and I apologize that this is making it all about me, but what I'm kind of hoping is that some of the things that I talk about you might see a little bit of you in it. Or if nothing else, you might be able to kind of think, oh, that's interesting. It's like I was, um, I was doing 16-8 fast for quite a long time. And then uh, I've started, I've started having a protein shake basically in the morning um, instead of doing the 16-8, just because uh, I, I, I kind of, I was reading and listening about how important protein is. And especially as you get to, because I'm 48 now. I, oh, I know, thank you very much. Oh. Well, I'm done stretching now, in case you're focused. Um, yeah, so I'm 48 now, I'm an old man. And I can sense that my body's kind of, it's getting to a point now where it's kind of like, ah, I'm starting to get a little, I'm not 20 anymore. And I was even just reading something saying the importance of protein for as you get older and that you actually exceed, everyone talks about 1.6 grams per kilogram. Um, 
uh, it's a kind of a, a training thing. But actually, they started to do studies where, where, where as you get into your 50s anyway for a man, you need to put in a lot more protein in, in order for protein th synthesis to happen. So I've started doing that. But that's the kind of stuff I'm going to talk about next. So, <laughs> so you're like, mm, I'll skip that row. <laughs> so, right, I, I, I'm not going to... There's part of my brain that wants to apologise for the stuff I was talking about today. And I'm not going to, because after all, it's the row that's important, not the stuff that <clears throat> falls out of my mouth. So as far as a row is concerned, for me, that was a great row. Um, I put my heart rate exactly where it was meant to be, which is then going to mean that I'm going to be refreshed enough to be able to do the next low intensity row. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm absolutely haggard because I've, uh, I pushed that one too hard. And then I'm still going to have capacity to then do the top end one, which comes after that. So this is part of why you do heart rate based training is to let your body recover and whatever. Um, and it was a, a good, tough row. It's exactly where it's meant to be. So hopefully you felt the same way too. Um, and then we can just, we can think about what I was talking about later, but yeah. So if you want to leave me a comment, just let me know. I mean, if nothing else, let me know, because you can obviously tell them a little bit, hmm, was this a, was this a good row? Would this be my, would I put this in the top 10? Probably not. So let me know what you thought of it. And uh, if you want to leave a hashtag, just to, just to let me know, then I've been using the get fit with row along hashtag for this entire series. Because basically if I can get, get fish with, get fish? No, don't get fish with row along, get fit with row along. Um, if I can have that hashtag happening enough, then maybe it'll like pop up as a, a minor trend somewhere. Unlikely, I know, but might as well try. So there we go. We are done. So this is, if you're doing these as four sessions a week, then that is the end of week one. Um, like I say, I'm off to have a burger. So make sure, make sure and hydrate and fuel and all that kind of stuff because it's very important. Um, and I will see you uh, um, for session one of week two or row five, depending on how you see it, um, uh, as quick as possible. Okay, so I'm going to uh, shut down and start editing this and try and get this up as soon as I can. All right, thank you so much for putting up with me for doing these sessions. I will see you in the next one. Until then, row well. Be well, take care, bye-bye.